What's up everyone? Sam here from ByteByBite.com and in this video I'm going to express sort of an unpopular opinion here which is that I strongly believe that you should still be practicing for whiteboard interviews. And if you want more videos just like this on coding interviews and developing as a software engineer, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. We're releasing new videos every week. All right, so why should we be continuing to practice for whiteboard interviews in this day and age where whiteboard interviews really aren't happening at all? Everything has been shifting to remote. We've been doing coding interviews on the computer where you have a lot of different tools than you necessarily would have if you're just on the whiteboard. So why is it necessary to continue practicing that way? Normally in the past, I've recommended to people that they practice writing solutions to coding interview questions on a piece of paper or if you have it on a whiteboard because that gives you practice with that specific thing that it is that you're trying to do, right? It gives you practice with that specific process of coding on a whiteboard, which we all know is so different from the normal way in which we code. But why is this still relevant now? Well, I wanna give you four specific reasons that I think that you should continue using this method for preparing for your coding interviews, even if that's not exactly what you're going to be seeing in the actual interview. Reason number one is that writing code by hand or writing it on a whiteboard gives you a much deeper understanding of the language and of what you're doing specifically than you're ever gonna get by coding on a computer. And the reason for this is that it's really making us take a step back and like look at things through a different lens, right? Normally when we are coding on the computer, even if we're writing in notepad or even if we're writing without all the developer tools that we're used to, it's still a different experience. There's a pattern recognition or like a habitual way in which we type things. And so we may not fully understand or fully remember what it is that something's supposed to look like. But when I sit down at my computer and I type public static void main as I'm writing a Java function, it's like that's just ingrained, right? I don't need to think about it. And the problem is that when we rely on that in our interviews, as soon as we get into that high pressure situation, all of a sudden that kind of goes out the window. Right, that's where those habits start to break down. That's where we start to overthink. And if you've ever had the experience where like you know something really well, but as soon as you try and like remember it on the spot, you forget it, that's the experience we have in our coding interviews. And so writing code by hand, writing it on the whiteboard forces you to relearn this stuff and learn it in a much more intentional way that's going to make it work much better for you in your interview. And specifically what I recommend you doing is practice writing code by hand on a sheet of paper, on a whiteboard, on whatever you have. And then when, once you're done writing it, copy that code verbatim into the compiler. Copy it into leap code and run it with a bunch of texts. And what you're going to find is most likely if you copy it verbatim, verbatim don't fix anything, right? Like don't fix, even if you see just a missing semicolon or something, don't fix it when you copy it in, run it, run a linter on the code and see what happens. See what sort of mistakes you made and then keep a checklist of those. What this is gonna allow you to do is it's going to allow you to be much more intentional about what mistakes am I making on a recurring basis. And again, you're going to develop a much deeper understanding of the language, which is going to serve you even if you go back to coding on the computer, now you're gonna be much stronger at what you were doing at writing code in that language than you were before. Now, the second reason why you should continue practicing whiteboard interviewing as a separate thing from just coding on the computer or practicing in an IDE is that you want to actually treat interviewing as a separate skill. And this is something that this is a mistake that I see people make so often is that they assume that rather than interviewing being its own skill, interviewing is just an extension of what they're doing as a software engineer. And there is some truth to this, right? There's truth to the fact that the fundamental elements are the same, right? We're coding in both cases. We're using that same syntax. So yes, there is overlap in those skills, but you're really shooting yourself in the foot if you don't look at interviewing as a separate skill. Because as, we've, as I'm sure you've seen when you've gone to like study recursion, for example, or dynamic programming, when's the last time that you actually saw those in your real job? When's the last time that someone gave you an algorithmic question to solve to you know, implement as part of this sprint at work? Right? It's just not something that's gonna happen normally. And so what happens is that we tend to treat interviewing as an extension of what we're normally doing, but then it's actually totally different. And so by putting ourselves in a different environment, by sitting down and saying, I'm gonna write this code on a piece of paper, I'm gonna completely separate this from what I was doing in my job, like working in an IDE, all that stuff, then you're really mentally separating it and you're forcing yourself to learn this as its own separate skill. 
And if you want to be truly successful at interviewing, treating it as, a, as its own separate skill and learning it and learning techniques that are specific to that is going to be incredibly valuable. Because the way that you sit down and write code for your job is not the same as the way that you're going to write down, sit down and write code in your interview. You're not gonna take the same approach because you're trying to accomplish something completely different. And so I would highly encourage you to practice coding on a piece of paper, practice sitting down and doing that so that you're learning this interviewing as its own standalone skill, that when you go into your interview, you're gonna be prepared for that. And you're not gonna be like so many other engineers where they're going in hoping that their engineering skills are gonna transfer and realizing they do not transfer nearly as much as you want them to. Reason number three to continue practicing whiteboard interviewing, even though we're not currently doing whiteboard interviews, is that it's really good as you are preparing for your interviews to get used to being uncomfortable and putting yourself in an uncomfortable situation. We, I think we can all be honest here that coding interviews do inherently suck, right? There's not, coding interviews, like there are definitely some people who enjoy them. I probably enjoy them more than the average person. But for most of us, coding interviews are not something that are gonna be fun. And then you're always going to be in this somewhat uncomfortable situation. There's someone basically watching you, some uh, watching you perform this task that you're not necessarily as good at as you wanna be. They're judging you throughout the entire thing. Sometimes it can be an enjoyable experience depending on your interviewer, but lots of times I see interviewers where they just sit there stone-faced the entire time. Right? So it's not a very comfortable situation, but you can get better at dealing with that discomfort and performing in that uncomfortable situation if you practice. Because at the end of the day, Dealing with discomfort is almost a skill unto itself. This is a skill where we're basically practicing when we practice our coding interviews, when we practice writing on a whiteboard or writing on a piece of paper, we're not just practicing the skill of solving those problems. We're practicing a bunch of meta skills. And this is what I hope you're starting to see as we talk through this, right? We're not just practicing how to solve these problems. We're practicing the language itself. We're practicing our thought process. We're practicing our problem solving. We're practicing how do we deal with these uncomfortable situations. And so by putting yourself into this situation and sort of embracing that discomfort, you're going to get much better at dealing with that and much better at performing under that pressure when that inevitably comes up here in your interview, whatever the format is. It's another reason to just mix things up as well. Like you don't necessarily want to do all your interview prep in one specific way. You want to try different things and keep yourself on your toes so that you get used to that inconsistency, that discomfort, and it's going to make you perform much better in your actual interview. And finally, the fourth reason why I strongly encourage you to continue practicing whiteboard interviews, even with all interviews being remote right now, is that I believe they are going to come back. Right At the end of the day, we have had to basically put pause, hit pause on all in-person interviews for the last six, nine months. Right, Things have really shifted. And they're going to continue to be different into the future than they were in the past. So I'm not saying we're gonna go back exactly to where we were before, but I do strongly believe that whiteboard interviews are going to come back in one way or another. We're going to continue to see different ways of testing people. We're going to continue to see people having to write things out by hand because that really does test people's ability in a different way. Remember, in the same ways that this is allowing you to perform prepare better. It's showing that you have a deeper understanding. That also is something that is of benefit to the interviewers. You may not like whiteboarding interviews. You may feel like they're a pain in the butt, but what they do show interviewers is that you are deeply familiar with the language. They show them that you have really prepared this and that you're not reliant on any other tools, that you understand it personally very deeply. And so I don't think that these are going to fully go away and being prepared for those, being prepared for all of these different cases is going to be really valuable in your interview prep into the future. And so with that, that's all I got for you today. Again, I would really encourage you to continue practicing for whiteboard interviews. You can mix it with other sorts of interview prep as well. You can mix it with coding in a basic text editor or coding in an IDE and practicing those problems in leak code. But I'd encourage you to make up, mix up your practice, try different things, and that's what's going to give you the best results in your interview because you're gonna be prepared for anything they can throw at you. And if you want a ton more advice on interview prep and being really strategic in how you're doing that, go to bitebybyte.com slash masterclass and you can check out our free coding interview masterclass. I go through the four horsemen of the whiteboarding apocalypse and show you exactly how to prepare for these interviews. So I'd highly encourage you to check that out. 
And with that, I appreciate you joining me today. Go ahead and give us a like and subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.